So let us get started by looking at continuity. Now in this first video, we're just going to look at a gut feel for continuity. And then in the next video, we're going to formally define it and look at how to calculate if a function is continuous at a specific point algebraically. So let's take a look. Here I've got four functions. Now, intuitively, the gut feel for continuity is if I can sketch this graph without lifting up my hand, then my function is continuous. Now, like I said, this is not a scientific explanation, but it helps to get an idea. So if I've got a function here, whatever this value A is, nothing happens there. I can sketch it. I don't have to lift up my hand. This function is continuous. If I move on to the next one, here at A, there's just a gap in my function. We've seen when we looked at limits, we've seen examples of functions like that with just a hole taken out, just a gap. One point where the function is not defined. So if I had to sketch it, I've got to lift up my hand and move over, jump across this value A. That one's not continuous. If I look at the third one here, if I sketch it, this function has a gap over here, but it's defined it up there. So this function is defined on all the real numbers. But there's something weird happens here. I've got to lift up my hand, color in the dot, come back again. Not continuous. And the last one I hear at A, there's a jump in my graph. I go up to there, I jump up and I go down. Also not continuous. So a function is continuous intuitively if you can sketch it without lifting up your hand. Then it's continuous in that area. So let's look at some of our functions that we're familiar with just to get a feel for what is which of them are continuous. So, here I've got a cubic function. Nothing funny happens. It's continuous. We keep sketching it. 1 over x squared. Now, 1 over x squared is continuous on this part, and it's continuous over here. But over x equal to 0, it's not continuous. So, it's continuous where it's defined. So, for those x values, it's continuous. For those x values, it's continuous. Here on the right, we've got a step function. The step function is continuous in that area, but here at 1, I'm jumping up, so it's not continuous at 1. Then I'm smooth sailing again, but here at 2, jumping up, not continuous at 2. So you can get an idea of what it means where a function is not continuous. These functions jump. So, in general, sine and cosine functions, they're continuous everywhere. Nice waves that carry on. Polynomials, whether they straight lines, quadratic, cubic, qu quartic, quintic, they're all continuous. Polynomials are continuous everywhere. Exponential and logarithmic functions we've seen, they're continuous everywhere on their domains. The last one we're looking at is rational functions. Now, a rational function is continuous on any interval on which the denominator is non-zero. So, on their domains, if I exclude those values where the asymptotes are, where the denominators are zero, it's continuous in this section from minus 6 to minus 3. It's continuous between minus 3 and 3. And it's continuous larger than 3. This is, and it can start at minus 6 or it can go all the way to infinity or from minus infinity, but rational functions are continuous on any interval on which the denominator is non-zero. So on that interval, the function is continuous. So in the next video, we're going to formally define what it means for a function be, to be continuous. But it's good to first have a gut feel of a continuous function because the definition is just a little bit technical. So in the next video, we'll look at the definition of continuity.